Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. It's been a long time since I've done one. Uh, this is a video response to Dave Birdzall. Uh, he was doing a compilation of games that uh, series that he thought were quite poor or bad. So I'm going to kind of throw in my tuppence worth here. I'm not kind of doing them in any order because um, they were just games I just didn't like. So we'll start off with this one here. Now the series started off well. Carmageddon. Um, it came out in the mid 90s. Really good game. A uh, lot of controversy, a lot of problems with the uh, people complaining because you could run people over. So there was various patches and fixes to patches to sort of sort this out. Great game, great fun. Um, just mindless sort of entertainment, really. Um, we then got Carmageddon 2, which was to me was an improvement over the original. Um, Smarter graphics, uh, better, it just seemed to be much better, looked a lot nicer, played a lot nicer, wasn't relying on the Voodoo 2 graphics card either, um, which the more the original game kind of did. Um, we moved on to what came out next, which was Carmageddon TDR 2000 on the PC as well. This game started to fall by the way, wayside as well, unfortunately... It was not made by stainless steel. It was a, another company that decided to produce it. It was nowhere near the quality uh, of the original two games. And this puts quite a bit of taste on the, the franchise. Because <laughs> around about the same time, they were bringing out Carmageddon for other formats. Whereas we had it for the PlayStation. Um, not good at all. <laughs> And then we had it also for the N64, which was really poor as well. And then Carmageddon disappeared for a long, long time. And we've been released, they've re-released it. Uh, Stainless Steel managed to get their license back for Carmageddon. And they've re-released uh, Carmageddon Reincarnation. Um, and to be honest, it's kind of back to its roots. It's kind of back on track again. The first two games are definitely worth a look as well, Carmageddon and Carmageddon 2. And the easiest way to get them today is actually buy them off Steam because they come with all the patches for Windows 10. So it allows you to play it 3D and it looks the best. So if you want to have a look at those games, certainly 1 and 2 I'd recommend. TDR, the PlayStation version and the 64 version, avoid. It's kind of soured that group, but hey ho. So that's probably my fifth place one. In fourth place, this might sur surprise some people because this game came out first. Uh, Manic Miner. Now, I had no problems with Manic Miner. Loved the game. Thought it was a great game. Absolutely outstanding. Great platformer. Way ahead of his time. Uh, Matthew Smith was an absolute legend for sort of producing this game. Uh, programming and producing this game. Plenty of videos on YouTube on how he did it and that as well. However, however, this is where things get a bit ropey. Got Jet Set Willie. Now, I tried to play this game. I really did. I tried to get into it. I just couldn't get into it. Uh, what frustrated me more was you'd do a jump into the next screen, shall we say, and you really were jumping blind. And it would be almost like a trap where you'd be continually falling and it, was, it would just loop and you'd lose all your lives and you were starting from scratch again. That just infuriated me uh, to a point it just put me off the game. And even with the sequel as well, I was kind of at the same as that as well. I just, I'd lost the love by that time. Um, so that is probably my fourth place position is the Jet Set Willy series. Although, yet again, the first one, loved it. Really good. That's probably my oldest game that I've got any issue with, to be honest. Um, I would probably say the next one after that is... Oh, this is going to be another controversial one. Forza. Now, I know a lot of people love Forza. Um. 
don't get me wrong, fantastic graphics, cars are really, really good, but it to me it gets boring really, really quick. Um, I did persevere with this one, and I did play it through it, and I did complete it. And I hoped number three was going to be the same, but it was more of the same. Uh, don't get me wrong, great car, uh, great graphics, the racing was pretty decent, good simulator, but too semi for me. I probably prefer my racers a bit more. Arcadey would probably be the better choice of words. Um, so yeah, that was me. That was my final Forza game that I played. Um, I haven't really touched any other one since. They've not really interested me. In fact, it's put me off a lot of the driving games. Even um, I went back and finished Burnout Paradise. And it's very padded out game as well, but it's very arcadey. But even that, I got bored with as well. Very bored with very quick. Disappointing as I used to love the a lot of the driving games, but I've kind of went off them now, and it's probably a lot to do with the, these two games here, Forza and Forza Three. The next one is uh, well, how can I put it? It will be probably a bit controversial as well, I would imagine. And it's the Borderland series. And again, I don't know. I, I played it with friends, which probably helped big time. Um, I did the second one with friends as well, which probably helped big time. But I just got sick of if just the whole fetch and carry mechanics of it. Go here, do this, come back, get your loot. Go here, do this, get your back. It just bored me to tears and I was probably dragged through the game by my friends online um, there's not really much I can say about this I don't get me wrong there's some good humour I love Claptrap I think he's really funny I think he's a great character for it but sorry Borderlands just didn't do it for me at all uh, unfortunately one of my friends has been at me to do Borderlands 2 on the Xbox One with him and it's kind of really do you really want me to do it um, but we'll see, we'll see if I'll put my cell through that. There was a nickname, um, one of my online friends came up well, I'll have to throw out uh, Legend Killer 2 for this one. He nicknamed it Boredom Lands. He kind of experienced the same thing as I did, he was quite bored of it by the time he got to the end. So, yeah, I know that'll be a bit controversial with a lot of people because I know a lot of people loved it. I didn't, unfortunately. So, yep, that's that next spot. I'm going to throw out a couple of, well, certainly an honourable mention, or here, or two here or there. Uh, I know Dave's covered these, so, yeah, <laughs> he's pretty much got The FIFA series, FIFA 06. That is the only FIFA game I've got. It's the only one that I'm going to ever, was ever going to play. And even that, I couldn't really play it that well either. They're not my cup of tea anyway, but I think... Today, with the more modern FIFAs and the controversy with microtransactions, loot boxes, which plenty of other channels have covered, and I think everybody will be well aware of them. Um, I think enough said. I think FIFA is actually spent. Although, I know people that buy them every year. They love them. Uh, I know a lot of them don't get caught into the online thing of buying the super teams and all this nonsense, but... I really do think uh, these games have lost their way, although I was never a fan of them in the first place. Um, so that's one of my honourable mentions. Another honourable mention, which Dave brought up as well, was this pile of crap. Um, Renegade 3. I couldn't wait when I heard this one was coming out. I uh, loved Renegade. And Target Renegade, the sequel, was just fantastic. You could also play a two-player co-op. Then this pile of drivel came out, and it was just like... <sighs> I was gutted I'd spent the money on this game. I just couldn't believe it. I did try and persevere with it. I did try and get something out of it. But no, it just wasn't happening. Uh, it's basically sat with my collection for years, and I can't even remember the last time I loaded it up. But that's my two honourable mentions, so we're going to get to first place.
First place is Stalker, Shadow of Ch Chernobyl. I was really, really pumped for this game when I heard it was coming out. I was really looking forward to it. The reviews were good. Um, it looked like my cup of tea, roaming about sort of the Chernobyl area. Um, sort of doing a bit of hunting, lots of mutants chasing you, stuff like that. Thinking it would be kind of like a, a standard first person shooter. Unfortunately, it wasn't. It was more of an RPG. Now, I'm not a fan of RPGs as well. Uh, they're just not my thing. Um, probably Borderlands was probably about the closest I get to an RPG without getting bored out of my skull. So, 20 minutes of trying to play this game and I gave up. I just absolutely gave up. I would say this is probably my number one slot um, for being worse games. So, that's my kind of top five of games that I really don't like or a series I don't like. I mean, they've not all been bad, because some of them, they did start off well. I mean, Carmageddon started off well, and it kind of has redeemed itself that Stainless Steel has got its the license back, but a bit in the middle. Jet Set Willy as well. Yeah, not my cup of tea either. Forza? No, didn't like them. And uh, obviously, board, Boredom Lands? No, not for me either. And this is my number one spot. <sighs> So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry, it was a little bit rushed, but just trying to get time to get this one done. So, hopefully, I'm going to do a, a top five. Uh, hopefully, in the next couple of days, get that video done and get enough five minutes spare to myself. So, I'll see you then. Take care. Ta-da.